how do we go about cultivating and developing social awareness? So honestly, social awareness is something that is, so just speaking from a, a, an, an educated perspective, it's something that's taught to children. Mm -hmm. That's the best time to teach it. Mm -hmm. Because what you're teaching is those critical components of empathy, kindness, um, respect. So you teach that to children. Parents teach that to children. You learn that in school. Wait your turn. Raise your hand. Be respectful. So, be kind. So that what you're saying that this is almost like a, one of those cultural, uh, social conditions or, or social instructions that we learn. Yeah. And uh, when we are in a community, we're in a, we're in a family. Yes, okay. definitely. So you learn how to be respectful. You learn how to say. Um, you know, being kind to other people and, and, and saying thank you and please and things like that. That's being kind to other people that those are skills of social awareness, right? Because you're saying this person gave me something. So what do I do? I thank the person for giving me this, mm -hmm. you know, respectfully, you're being respectful to this person. You disagree with somebody, but you do it in a, in a, in a respectful manner. Mm -hmm. Right. So but, then, so then, what you're saying with that is that these are not just for just simple formalities that we're doing. There is a reason why we should say thank you. There's a there's a there's a reason why we should say, you know, open the door for someone and and be polite. Or th th there's there are important societal benefits, of course, to doing this. Yeah, because it's it's a domino effect. When okay. I, I I I look at it like the example of. Um, I had somebody, a coworker of mine say that they went to Dunkin' Donuts and they go up, they order their food, then they go to the next, I guess you order at the thing and then you go to the next yeah, one and then you here. pay for your food. Yeah. yeah. And you pick it up there and the customer says, or the cashier says, oh, you're the customer behind you paid for your meal or your, your coffee or your donut or whatever. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? It feels good. Free donut? So what do you, so then what do you do? You're like, hell yeah. If coffee you, and a donut, yeah. I'm good. I, or a sandwich, what my, or just a coffee. For some people, just the coffee is great. Yeah. They go forward during the day. The social awareness comes in with how are you paying that forward? Mm, okay. And that's how I look at it. That's how you look at because it. Because I was given something and it was kind. It was a kind act that mm -hmm. didn't have to be done for me. So what can with I no do for expectation. some? None. Right. Because that customer is going to drive away and they're not going to get anything out of it. This guy's got to pay for your food and his own. Yeah. Right. So what are you going to do to pay it forward? What are you going to do to be kind and respectful and appreciate uh, appreciative of another individual? See, but I also see someone saying, you know, because I know there's a lot of people, there's a, there's a movement out there about kindness, be kind, be kind. And, and you know, there's a person out there saying, of course, whatever It's like, I don't have to be kind to anybody. And that would go back to the narcissistic part that I was, I'm not labeling. I'm not, a, <laughs> I am not a psychologist. I'm not, we should, that's why we needed Brian here. But those are individuals who have those narcissistic tendencies. How about mm. that? So, so the well being and, and doing these little acts, acts of kindness, the benefit of it all is that it 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 ties our bonds in in society much more, you know, mm -hmm. um, in, in all aspects. So it could be just as simple as you know, one of the big topics is it's you know police brutality and things like in and traffic stops and people feeling uncomfortable. And that situation being more kind, that, and it goes that, both ways because the police ways, officer. Yeah. The law enforcement officer has no reason uh -huh. to be rude to somebody they pulled over if that person is not being belligerent but or rude to them. But it happens the other way, too. It, it happens that, both it's ways. A, it's a two-way street. So I'm not knocking law enforcement officers because I work with law enforcement officers, so I respect that that um, line of work deeply. But it's also you have those police officers that are at this level that they think I'm, I really am above the law yeah, yeah and yeah, they yeah, really yeah, yeah. live that yeah. and they exercise that with people when they don't need to. We had mm -hmm. that experience when yes. we went on a, a vacation, law enforcement officers yelling at me for no, cause I, I stepped off the curb when I shouldn't have mm -hmm. and went off on me mm -hmm. and you were protecting me. Like you don't need to treat people that way. That is a prime example mm -hmm. right there. Like that wasn't necessary. I, I, I talked to, I, I tell the guy. I tell the guy off at the. I know. At the and tell you know people mm -hmm. off. I'm just, I just. I need. That's to, the bad boy side of you. It's, that's the, it's the South South Bronx coming out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> 
South South Bronx. (laughs) (laughs) That's hilarious. But I just think that um, just to answer the question about mm -hmm. how you cultivate it and develop it is just being able to be more, um, uh, you, you have to really be in alignment. Okay. I, I think that's a good way. That That's a word that I use is being in alignment. Mm-hmm. Um, when I think I've talked about it in the past, how we have those wheels that come together and they, if they don't, the grind, yeah. they don't, then they don't move forward, you know? And then what mm-hmm. happens is the rest of the machine breaks down. Mm-hmm. So if you look at that as the wheels, as we're the individuals, individuals here together, the wheels, and we're in alignment with each other yeah. by being aware <laughs> I, I'm glad this is probably ooh. let me just say this this is probably super poetic for people they're uh-huh. probably thinking these people are so like they're like in another world they're in like they're in utopia mm. right we're in utopia because that that's not a world that can exist but i defy those people i defy that because i believe that that is a world that can exist and i think that the way that we can make that world happen mm-hmm. Uh, and again, this is probably a poetic way of thinking or a line of thinking is by being aware of how we are like, and I'm, again, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but yeah. I can only use myself as an example because I'm speaking from my own perspective. I have had to check myself multiple times, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And apologize to people and, and really recognize like, what could I have done differently to be a better person? Mm -hmm. in that situation. And when we ask these questions of ourselves, if we actually humble ourselves enough to ask these questions, the world becomes a better place. Yeah. One person at a time. And, and I think that I don't want people to misunderstand and correct me if I'm wrong, that, that being kind, number one has to come from a place that you want to do it. It, 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 it's not Mm -hmm. something that is, has, that is forced that you feel like I have to do this because then it's not genuine. Right. It doesn't come from here. Right. Right. That's number one. And the second thing is, doesn't mean that you have to be a pushover. I, I was going to say, you know, yeah. because, um, absolutely I, not. It's, it, it's, I, re, I, I recently, I saw this, um, this thing between Jordan Peterson and I forgot his name, Byron, uh, a professor, Byron. Um, oh, um, the dude with the glasses. Yes, Dyson. Dyson. I forgot. His, I think it's his name. No. And yeah. And then you know. Um, you should put that in the link so people can look at it. Because yeah, that's and, a prime example. And and, and and what I saw is a debate, but you know he uh, Dyson called uh, uh, Jordan Peterson. You know, uh, you are cranky old man. You know, you know. He was mean. White privilege and things like that. And and and. and Jordan Peterson says, you don't know anything about yeah. me. And, 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 and he and was and that and the other. diplomatic. And he was very responses. diplomatic around him in his responses. And I felt kind of disappointed in Dyson because having the conversation like that, from that point of view, um, where, where do we get an understanding? Where do we really begin to, for, was- for, for a person to understand your point of view <laughs> and, and, and for them to, and for you to understand their point of view and come to a middle ground. Right. How, why would you call somebody out like and that? To, to respect each other's perspectives. You don't and have to it. agree, yeah. but he was just downright just rude. rude. He was just disrespectful. And ugly. And, and yeah. that is exactly And I lost what I'm a lot of respect about. for him because he's got a lot of valid points. He's got points. a really good point. He's yeah. got a lot of valid points, but when he did that, I'm like, wow. It's like. Th- that wasn't necessary. 